What's going on there guys? Good evening. It's the Earthmaster here on this Monday night uh, with a quick update video here. The latest quake on the globe shows a 1.1 earthquake out here along the west coast. Some activity ramping up here along the middle America trench there off the coast of uh, Nicaragua, Mexico area, Costa Rica. All seeing increase in activity today within that region of the plates. Uh, notice some deeper movement earthquake activity returning to the Fiji Islands area. Uh, before we jump into that, going to cover uh, the Tau Volcano in the American uh, Samoa, the Manua Islands area. Still seeing quite a bit of earthquake activity listed here on this seismograph station. Uh, the USGS is installing a, uh, uh, a couple seismic meters there uh, throughout the region. Uh, probably won't be in function or in operation for about one to two weeks. So once that is tested and operational, then we should have access to the new data streams aside from this activity that you're seeing here. Uh, over the last 24 hours, definitely noticed uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity still ringing through the, uh, the Tau Volcano region. Again, in the American Samoa, looking at uh, quite a few of these larger quakes here, roughly between probably, I'm guessing probably between the two to three magnitude range um, nothing bigger currently, but they are definitely pretty consistent. There's been quite a few of them throughout the last 24 hours as well. And some of these smaller ones there, uh, again, much smaller as far as the uh, magnitude goes, but they are still part of this ongoing swarm that's uh, occurring there at the, um, the Tau Volcano. And um, within the American Samoa area. All right, so what else we got here? Earthquake activity, as noted on the map, a deep movement returning here within the last hour around the Fiji Islands area. Very close to Samoa, though. Got to watch these uh, deeper earthquakes here. They do tend to stir the pot, so to speak, uh, within the region of uh, the area as far as volcanic movement goes. Also, just plate stress uh, dynamically here in this region. Although it's kind of outside its normal zone for the deeper earthquakes. Normally, we see them right here about south of Fiji uh, along the Tonga Trench area. This one's more up north uh, and that could have something to do with the ongoing activity we're seeing uh, with the volcanoes there across the American Samoa. So we'll definitely watch that. Um, and that's that just struck here within the last hour. Uh, also some movement further down along the Kermadec Trench, not showing up here on the USGS map. That is on the EMSC model though. And uh, a little bit smaller than the 4.0 threshold have to go in a little bit further on this map here to see some of these a uh, little bit smaller quakes there along the southern end of the Kermadec Trench, North Island, New Zealand region. Seen quite a few threes and twos uh, over the last 24 hours. And there's that huge cluster of swarming. Uh, and this is that pretty much includes all the magnitudes here on the EMSC model along the Middle America Trench. Looking quite active there for sure. Um, Got to watch that area because it is known for some larger earthquakes within the Middle America Trench. The latest quake here within the last hour, 4.3, just off the coast. Uh, looks like it's inland. Uh, yeah, about 35 kilometers down into the Middle America Trench there. Uh, did have some further deep, deep movement, uh, about 126 kilometers deep into the subduction zone here, the Middle America Trench. Uh, earlier today, so definitely got to watch this region pretty closely. These deeper earthquakes do put a lot of strain up along this area of the subduction zone itself. So watch it pretty closely, folks, there. Um, let's see what we got for the west coast. This is a 2.5 map and above, so there's a couple earthquakes that struck over the course of the last 24 hours here on the map. A 2.9 looks to be the largest uh, along this area of the San Andreas Fault. It is just off the creeping section here to the west a little bit. Uh, looks like it might be on one of these other fault systems here. So uh, just kind of watching it. Also some further movement down south on the San Andreas Fault there. It looks like a uh, 2.6 near the Pinnacles area. That one's coming in from last night. And uh, a little activity down south as well. So. A uh, little bit of uptick in the 2.5 category. When we bring up the all magnitudes, uh, of course, it does add a few more earthquakes here onto the map. But no major significant swarming that I'm noting here across the region. Ridgecrest area starting to fill in a little bit. Looking very typical of uh, their earthquake activity there. 
All right, uh, further to the north around the Long Valley Supervolcano. Got a eh, couple small quakes outside of the region. Nothing big, doesn't look like any return of swarming anytime soon uh, for that matter. Up here off the coast of Northern Cal, this one coming in from last night, a little 2.0 at the uh, northern end of the uh, San Andreas Fault there. All right, further up north into the Oregon, Washington region. Still seeing some activity, it looks like, noted on the Mount St. Helen seismograph. Uh, and I, I think this, I'm pretty certain this was from earlier this morning. I haven't seen anything new pop up as far as any more microquakes, but we'll check out the uh, PNSN map here in just a second. Yellowstone National Park up here at the Super Volcano. A couple small earthquakes rumbling through there uh, in that area. Let's see what we got for the Yellowstone region here. Uh, a little bit of activity, and here's one of these quakes popping up here around the eastern section of the park, it looks like. Uh, and sometimes these don't really show up on the USGS map. I'm talking about this one right here. It looks like around the timestamp of uh, 1900, possibly, or 19, uh, somewhere around there, just after the 1900 UTC time. And I don't believe, yeah. Let's see, what do we got here? 0.6? I don't. That's 1907. Yeah, I think the 1907 timestamp is going to be this one right here. A little small microquake. But they don't have this one right here uh, measured on the map. And notice the uh, distinct signature between these two. Basically, you have a very localized earthquake. That's going to be this one right here, well-defined spike. And then you have more of a distant, larger earthquake, but away from this region. And looking at the map here, it looks like it's most likely around the eastern section here of Yellowstone National Park. And even possibly a little bit distant from this area. Uh, but still, it's kind of reading the strongest here on this map. So not 100% not certain where this is occurring. But notice that it did show up across a good section of the seismograph stations there at Yellowstone. All right. Um, what else we got here? A little bit of activity stretching across the board. New Mexico, Oklahoma, New Madrid zone. Nothing going on here in the South Carolina region. But just a real, 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 real quick recapture of uh, what the USGS put out. Uh, I, I don't believe it's fear-mongering by any uh, aspect, but they did issue a uh, yeah, earthquake advisory uh, for the central South Carolina region. Basically, they're trying to uh, put out a little forecast, so to speak, of uh, what, what they could expect, maybe. Who knows? They've been having a pretty good swarm of activity in the South Carolina region. Uh, looks like that began on December 27th, around two, yeah, 2021 last year. And since then, they've had a pretty good swarm of activity. So they're thinking that possibly that uh, earthquakes continue, but none larger than magnitude 4.0 within the next month. So they're just, I, I don't know what they're up to, but they're definitely putting out, uh, uh, maybe they know something we don't a little odd but uh, I did cover it on my last update video it is up on the channel not gonna go and read through this again but uh, yeah this was put out earlier today from the USGS in regards to the uh, swarming there at the Elgin South Carolina region where there's no earthquake activity over the last 24 hours uh, to report the uh, South America region outside of Santiago Chile a couple small fours even further down south we haven't seen too much movement down here uh, just north of the Drake Passage area, 4.2, 35 kilometers. Some movement over the last 24 hours throughout the Atlantic Ocean kicking up here. And uh, looking over here around the Philippines, northward, seeing a little activity as well, 5.3 in the Japan area. Although that one coming in late last night. We haven't seen a whole lot of renewed activity uh, along the Western Pacific or the adjacent plates here recently. So... Uh, maybe getting into it though. We'll see how it plays out with that deeper earthquake movement in the Fiji Islands area now. Uh, Pahala, about the uh, only activity out there kicking up today. 13 earthquakes here across the island. The Big Island, a one earthquake out in the Pacific around the Loihi Seamounts, a 2.5 at 6.4 kilometers. It looks like it's in that area where we did have a little bit of swarming, but uh, yeah, we'll see how that uh, plays out. 
All right, trimmer map tonight. Looking at 339 epicenters of trimmer. That's a pretty big number here um, across this area of Oregon and Northern California. Now I know last night we had, uh, oh, what was it, about 400 and something, right? Let me see, 404. So a pretty good increase in trimmer going on here across the West Coast. Uh, along the Cascadia subduction zone. Last time we've seen this, uh, it, it picked up like this for a little while on a broad scale, and then we had uh, a little bit larger earthquake activity around Japan and the uh, southward towards the uh, Philippine plate here throughout the Philippines. So we might want to watch this. Kind of a little ongoing um, sequence of events that tend to happen when we see this trimmer activity really kick up. But at the same time, uh, I think we got to watch the Cascadia when we see this type of trimmer. Obviously, the pressure is not uh, disappearing. It's definitely building up. When you take one plate and shove it down underneath the other, you're adding further strain up here on the locked area of the Cascadia subduction zone. So we'll watch that. Uh, let's go ahead and check out Mount St. Helens real quick and see if we got anything kicking up there. As uh, far as earthquake activity goes, Check out this seismograph station. Yeah, I really can't wait to have access. We'll check out the uh, um, Tau Volcano seismograph stations once they get something uh, better in the uh, in the area. A couple small earthquakes here within the last half hour or so. You guys see that uh, pretty well defined. Couple spikes localized at the Mount St. Helens region. And looking at the course of the afternoon time frame, a couple smaller earthquakes in there as well localized. Some of these other um, they kind of look like earthquakes and then again they kind of don't uh, and they look distant from this area I don't know if they have rock falls up there I don't know if they still have snow melting up on the uh, Mount St. Helens area but a lot of that does play in, in part to in, in environmental type disturbances and noises here on the seismograph but earthquakes definitely going to look well defined and spiky and there was definitely a couple of them throughout the uh, uh, 24 hours or so uh, let's see what we got here for the uh, sp sp space weather. Excuse me, got hiccups all of a sudden again. Uh, let's bring that up. Do do do. Where to go? There we go. Um, well, so these guys uh, have a forty percent chance of a C flare, a uh, five percent chance for an M flare, and I'm sure that's coming from thirty eighty five. Thirty eighty five is growing, but it looks like the complex. Um, magnetic field that it had looks like it's starting to single -ize, be a little bit more single and not quite as complex let me see what we got uh, yeah let's see here yeah earlier this there was a lot of mixing going in here it is growing so we'll continue to watch it uh, and this is the one that is facing us right now earth side and uh, could pop off uh, kind of looked like it was going to do an M flare a little bit earlier today but uh, things drastically change with these sunspots, I'm telling you. Uh, they, uh, it's almost like they want to do something, but they just kind of go away and fade out with the sunset, so to speak. There's a new development, a couple new developments around the eastern limb here, north and south. So we'll see how these things play out in the coming days. But for now, we'll watch 3085, see if it gets its act together or not. But um, I don't think it's got quite the potential. It does have a beta magnetic uh, magnetic class. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of looking independent here of the uh, magnetic fields. We'll see how it plays out though, folks. Uh, three day geomagnetic forecast back to the green category. No expected auroras for now, unless something magical appears, a surprise, but I don't see it coming anytime soon. There's the, uh, see, that's kind of what it looked like earlier. We're starting to get all that inner mixing in of the, uh, of the uh, polarity of the fields right there. Let's see here. Uh, appears to have a weak magnetic delta field within the center of the group and could pose a threat for an isolated moderate M flare. But since then, that whole spot has kind of just disappeared. Uh, and you can see it pretty nicely here on this area. It looks like it's just disappeared. Uh, and these two are kind of taken over separately, going their own ways. But uh, it was looking pretty active this morning. But uh, we'll see see if it comes back or not. All right, guys, have a good night. Stay safe out there, and we will chat at you another time.
And uh, like I said, if you didn't get to uh, watch that update video in regards to the uh, advisory earthquake notification on uh, South Carolina, go check it out. It is up on the channel. We'll chat at you guys a little bit later. Have fun. Peace out.